What's going on, vinyl community? Welcome back. This is Hubtunes. I am Mike. I got a new series. It's called Rock and Roll High School. I'm going to show five records from my high school years. Maybe, you know, a little bit junior high, um, probably. Uh, it's going to be just, you know, records that I don't listen to as much anymore. But man, they were so important in my life when I was a kid. Um, I moved to Chicago in 1980 from Boston. Lived in the far burbs of, uh, north burbs of uh, Boston. And um, I moved to Chicago and music became everything everything in my life. Before that, I had, you know, some Beatles records. I had Rubber Soul. I had Gary Newman's Principle of Moments. I, I, Queen I was huge, you know, in the late 70s. So I had records like that, but uh, none of them were really stuff I bought. The first record I ever bought was uh, Gary Newman's Principle of Moments, or Principle of Moments, uh, Pleasure Principle. And, um, and Queen. I bought a lot of Queen when I was, you know, still out on the East Coast. But I really didn't start buying my records, like collecting records, until I moved to Chicago. And I blame that on two of my best friends. Uh, their names are also Mike. And we listened to everything. Um, we, we, we just, we bought every day, every Tuesday, we would go to the record store and we would buy records and we'd ride our bikes and ride our bikes home. And it didn't matter if it was snowing or raining. It was what we did every Tuesday. And, um, God, it was just an innocence and a, just a such a great time. You know, I think we all have, you know, memories of that, you know, especially as record collectors. So um, I'm going to just show five records from my from my collection that I still have. These actually, and I pulled out all five of these. These are all records I bought on one of those little bike trips to the record store. So... Um, yeah, these, these are all originals um, from that era. So uh, this one, I was a big Van Halen fan. Who wasn't in the early 80s? And this is my favorite Van Halen record. That's probably not a popular opinion. This is Fair Warning, their fourth fourth record. And um, it's I always liked it because it's dark. <laughs> that tells you what kind of kid I was. Uh, it's a dark record. It's not a party record. It's not You Really Got Me and Beautiful Girls and, you know, I ain't talking about love. You know, it, this this is a dark record, and it's, it's, it's definitely not a party record. The guitar work on here is dark, if that's possible. It's very grindy, and gr it's just, I've always absolutely adored this. And the title, the opener, Unchained, is probably my favorite Van Halen song. I just, I really dig this. Mean Streets is great. I think that opens this. Oh, that's the opener, yeah. And then uh, Sinner Swing, hear about it later. Um, it's just a really good record. Um, mean Street, so this is Love. Push Comes to Shove. I definitely spun this a lot. And it's, a, you know, it's still in pretty decent condition. That's one thing, you know, even my records from, you know, high school and stuff, they're all in really pretty good shape. Uh, I, I I take really good care of my records. And I did when I was young, too. Uh, the follow-up would be absolutely the opposite of this record. <laughs> Diver Down is my least favorite Van Halen record. And it's a party record, and it's all covers, and it's I think it's their worst record. Uh, again, probably uh, not a popular opinion. Um, actually, their next two records would not be a... Well, that's a whole nother video <laughs> on Van Halen, which I'll probably never do. I loved this record when I was a kid. I still love this record, and I never listened to it. But this one, just, God, I loved it. And none of my friends liked it. It's Jackson Brown's debut, uh, Saturate Before Losing, or Using, <laughs> Losing. Um, awesome record. His first three or four records are great. This is the one that has uh, Doctor My Eyes and uh, Jamaica Say You Will, Child in These Eyes, Something Fine, and then the song Under the Falling Sky on side two was my favorite. I still love this. This is a great record. Rock Me on the Water is on here. I highly, highly recommend this. Really good. In fact, this one is going to stay out because I have not listened to this in ages. But uh, Jackson Brown, uh, accompanied by, who else is on here? You know, everybody is on here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Albert Lee on guitar. You got Jim Gordon. Sneaky Pete is on here on the harp. You got uh, David Campbell. This is a wonderful record. Really, really good. This record blew me away. Being a kid, and this is earlier. This is earlier than high school. Um, yeah, because when did this come out? 
82. So I was I was in high school. Um, and when this came out, I was just, as a kid that young, you know, a freshman in high school in 1982, I was addicted to Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin was everything to me. Uh, Led Zeppelin, I was, a, I was a child of classic rock. You know, Led Zeppelin, The Doors, The Clash, Rolling Stones, The Beatles, and the, you know, The Who, I, I could go on and on. But I remember when this came, this came out. We were so excited. You know, Zeppelin was over. It wasn't coming back. And we were so excited for this record. Pictures at 11, Robert Plant's first solo record. Man, I still, still think this is his best solo record. I do like some of the stuff he's done with the shapeshifters. It's totally different. So yeah, it's almost impossible to, um, to uh, compare the two. Uh, but uh, this is my favorite of his all his solo records. The one that would follow it up, Pictures at a... Uh, what was that? Principle of Moments, which is what I did earlier. Uh, I don't like that record. I think Big Log is a drag. Uh, In the Mood, that opener. Ooh, just two songs that just drag that record down. But then everything else is really good. I really liked the rest of that record. But right there, man. Ooh. Um, he discovers a guy named Robbie Blunt on guitar. Holy crap. He was an amazing guitarist. Absolutely amazing. You got Phil Collins and Cozzy Powell on drums. Uh, really, really good record. And uh, if this song had been on that record, Far Post, this song would have been... This would have made that album so much better. I mean, it, it's great already, but I don't know what you would leave off of it. That's the thing. And this is still the album era, so you're not getting uh, jamming it on a CD. Uh, this song, Far Post is my favorite solo Robert Plant song. His vocal on here is unreal. His range on the, that song is terrific. The keyboard, the piano that's there is just great. This is an EP. It's Actually, it's just an extent. What did, what did we call them back then? EPs? No, this was a extended single or something. I don't know what it was. Uh, but anyway, awesome, awesome song. Uh, Far Post, you put those two together, you have an absolutely legendary album uh, i just i really really dig this record i uh, would see him on the following uh, tour for the next album because he didn't tour with this album he would tour with the next album and i i saw him and oh my god i was a kid in a candy store that, that i was just in heaven but um two solid records his early stuff and then it, i think he just lost his way after that now and then i can't stand and whatever the maniac one after that I, I couldn't stand that either but the first two pretty solid records this record is one that um boy my earliest memories of hearing this record is would be high uh, probably junior high dances yeah it was probably junior high dances they would play this record at junior high dances and uh being the nerd i was i just stood in the corner with my friends and watch people dance to Tom Sawyer and <laughs> Limelight and uh, what else? There was another. Oh, YYZ. They would play YYZ at our at our uh, junior high dances. And I remember when this came out. I didn't know who Rush were in 1980, uh, but Tom Sawyer was so massive, so massive. Uh, when did this come out? 80. Yeah, I don't see it on here. But it's just a massive album. This thing was everywhere. And I, I was in heaven. I loved it. And you know what I loved the most about it? And this is going to sound weird, but maybe you record collectors will remember this. It had a really thin, it still does. This is, it has a really thin cardboard, like super thin. Like it, it's just wob, like wavy. And I always thought that was weird. And it's the only record of theirs. Actually, Signals might be like that too. I'm not sure. But um, I just remember being a kid and holding that record and thinking, why is it so flimsy compared to every other record I have? But it was cool. I just loved it. And this is a great record. This is a really good record. I love um, the song uh, Witch Hunt. Is it Witch Hunt or is it, uh, what's, what's this other song on here I love? It's a sing, it's, it, was, it was a B-side to a single and I thought it was... Oh, uh, Camera Eye. Camera Eye is one of the best Rush songs. I absolutely dig that song. So, uh, yeah, Rush, Moving Pictures. That was a big one. That was ju that was more junior high. Because I remember Signals came out probably when I was in high school. And uh, nobody liked that when it came out. Uh, New World Man. All my friends were just like, this sucks. But um, I thought it was 
decent. It wasn't this, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it held its own. And, it, you know, I played it a couple of months ago, and it does kind of... It, it holds up. Uh, Subdivisions is great. Analog Kid is good. It, it, there's some good songs on uh, on um, Signals, but not like Moving Pictures. <laughs> that that was a game changer when that album came out. Uh, this, is, this is an album because... I pulled this because it's, first of all, it's my favorite album by this artist. And it was the second concert I ever went to. And I just, it's a pinnacle in his, in his uh, repertoire. And uh, most people will say it's not. But I just, I absolutely dig it. And this is Security by Peter Gabriel. Uh, this is, for me, his high point. I, you know, there's a few things on So that are good. Overall, I don't like So, probably because of the overexposure. Uh, these, you know, those were songs that were on the radio and MTV and everything for years and years and just drilled into our head, um, unfortunately, because there are some good songs on there. Red Rain is great, but, um, th this, this is, this is where it's at. Uh, I Have the Touch, um, Kiss of Life, obviously Shock the Monkey, uh, Family in the Fishing Net. This is, this is a perfect album for me. I absolutely love this. Um, San Jacinto, uh, just a wonderful record. And when I was a kid, I, you know, I, we went to see him in concert on this tour, which would later become the Plays Live album. And it's still one of the great concert memories of my entire life. I, I just, I, I, I remember just being, you know, a 15 year old kid going, what? He, it was crazy. You know, he, he was it's still when he would wear makeup and he had, he had a, like a jungle gym. So like, like bars set up throughout th on the whole stage and he would swing from the bars during songs. And, um, you know, Tony Levin on bass and Rick Murata on drums and just yeah, a terrific band. And I was, I just remember being blown away. It was at the, I want to say it was at the UIC Pavilion in uh, Chicago, a terrible, terrible venue for a concert. Uh, but one of the great concert memories of my entire life was seeing Peter Gabriel on that tour. So, um, yeah, that's it. First installment, Rock and Roll High School. Uh, it's going to be a mishmash of all kinds of stuff. So um, <laughs> if you think if you think uh, that's all there is, man, I've, I've already started making lists of albums that I'm going to pull and uh, listen to. I mean, I, that's the thing. I'm going to listen to these albums again before I um, make the videos. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's Chugging along, making more videos. <laughs> uh, question, comments, snide remarks down below in the comments. Talk to you later. Bye.